Are you struggling with being stiff on your forehand? Hopefully it doesn't look as bad as that looked, but you might be struggling where you don't feel that same release. You look at the pros and they're so smooth and loose and relaxed. And really that idea of being smooth and loose helps you release the energy through the ball or into the ball so you can have more effortless power. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three different things you need to start doing, drills included, that you can start doing to make sure you start smoothing out your forehand. Because the smoother your forehand is, the more power you're gonna get because you can just relax and let the racket do the work. So the very first concept I want you to understand is what's the most important part of a car? You may have heard this before, but if you haven't, I think this is super relevant. So there's two big principles I wanna share with you that I think will absolutely change your game, which is first, what's the most important parts of a car? One, the steering wheel. Two, the engine. Three, the wheels. And how this relates is that my engine is how I use my body. Okay, and the more I can use my body, the more I can get my hand moving faster. My hand and my arm are the steering wheel. Basically, they tell the ball where to go. So when I swing, depending on how my racket face is in the path, that's gonna help me determine where the ball's gonna go. The wheels are obviously my feet and how I get into position. Now in this video, we're gonna really focus just on the body and making sure that as you rev your engine, that you're not cutting off the power you're creating through your body. So the very first thing is we wanna understand how to use our body. And the best way I think of doing this is thinking about unnatural and natural states. And what I mean by that is that when I stand like this, this is a natural state of my body. Cool, video over. No, I'm just joking. But this is the natural state of my body. Now, I don't wanna do anything. So this is how a lot of players hit balls. They go ahead and they stand like this and they go, okay. And instantly there, I got stiff because now guess what? My arm, the steering wheel, has to do the work to create power. Hence, you get stiff. I mean, just imagine seeing a car and you don't turn the engine on and you're like, come on, let's go. That's exactly how it should feel when we're hitting the ball like this. I'll do it again and again, I'm moving and I'm getting stiff because my arm has to do the work. It's trying to be the engine and the steering wheel. Now the difference is if I start using a unnatural state, which means if you take my body and twist it like this, now guess what my body wants to do, especially if I add a little bit more of the knees. If I push, it wants to come back to a normal position. So if I'm here and do that exact same position, boom, it's gonna start moving my arm. And not to get into too much detail in this video, but the key here is this, that my shoulders and hips are not facing the same direction, like a natural state. This is a very unnatural state. And by loading and pushing in my legs, what happens is this whole action creates what the second main principle is the right sequence or kinetic chain. Meaning I'm pushing on my legs, my legs are pushing on my hips, my hips then slingshot my shoulder and my hand forward. So even if I just do this and I have my hand here and push, boom, you can see how my hand moves very fast. Therefore, it doesn't have to be the engine also. And so a really easy way of doing this is just moving out and thinking about the twist drill. So if you've ever done the twist drill where you're sitting on the ground and you're twisting like this, you're going really fast, you're working your abs, and you're like, mm, summertime abs, that's the drill that's gonna also help you with your forehand. So if I think about summertime abs, just like this, this is called the summertime ab drill, okay? So simply taking my hands like this, stepping over here, you can see how now I'm twisted and now I want to uncoil. When I get to this position, notice how my hips are facing that direction, shoulders are facing this direction, and as I uncoil, my hips start facing this direction. So if I just do this, and I'm gonna actually, to demonstrate that, you know, just I'm gonna use a continental grip, not that you should use a continental grip, but I wanna really show you how, now that with my arm not doing the power, or doing the, the stroke, uh, or creating the power, that I don't really have to do that much with my arm, but other than direct, that we're gonna talk about in a second. So, ball fed, summertime drill, Okay, pretty sweet, I didn't know that happened. But you can see how I'm uh, creating a lot of power because my body's coiling and then uncoiling. And there's different ways you can set your body up, but it's understanding that this tension that you create by doing this, it's what's really important. So the second thing we're gonna focus on is the steering, how we get the ball to go where we want it to go. Now there's four main kind of apps, or the way I think of it is, like if you had a phone and you had different apps to do different things, there's four main apps we wanna kind of access on our phone. There's one app that controls the height, and that's opening and closing the racket face, which is gonna send the ball, and so we're only gonna do this with my wrist, so in a second, Dan's gonna feed me a ball, my racket face is closed, ball goes lower, ooh, really low, I'll actually hit the strings this time goes low, and if I open it, same thing, 
ball goes higher. That controls the height of the ball. Then we have the pass. So I'm going to keep my string uh, racket face like this, and I'm going to come up on the ball, and I'm going to go straight. So I'm coming up, I get top spin, I'm going to go straight, I get a flatter ball, and let's, let's come down. Okay? I open my racket face a little bit so that'll work. But you can see the different types of spin I get on. The uh, next two knobs that we're not going to focus on, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about, is first, which we already talked about, was revving the engine. How fast I'm swinging. So if I really rev my engine, ooh, so I got to change my racket face, I went too low. If I really rev my engine and adjust my racket face, you can see how fast, because I'm using those racket face and the upward path with the rev of my engine, how fast the ball can go. The final thing is timing. Meaning that if I start my swing earlier, the ball's going to go more cross court. Hence, we don't want to do that because we like Daniel and we don't want to hit Daniel. And if I wait longer, it's going to go down the line. So we'll go slightly cross court, okay? And then we'll wait longer and move my feet up and we'll go down the line. So you can see now how you got it. Now, let's get back to this whole stiffness thing. Since we solved the problem of using our body, generally what I see students do is that they're so used to getting tight that as they're using their body, they still get tight. So the next two drills are going to really help you with that. And the first drill I want you to do is what I call the two finger drill. We're going to make an L shape and use this last finger and going to hook it around the racket. So what I'm going to do is take that L, hook it around the racket right here and have those two or three fingers, I should say three fingers, and we're going to scoot it all the way down to the bottom. And the racket should be loose just like that. So if I'm loose, I can't really clutch and grab onto the racket. So what I'm going to do is swing like that, just using my three fingers. So if you can see it, I'll really make sure the two fingers are off. If you can see it, boom, I'm much looser because I can't grab the racket super tight. Got a little miss hit, okay? Now, even if you did want to use two fingers, I'm going to use it like this. I'm going to have to get them to hold the bottom racket. And here's the thing. With these two fingers, I'm just directing the racket and the path. My body's doing the work. So let's see how fast I can potentially hit it with just two fingers. Daniel moved that time. He's like, I don't know about two fingers. Oh, oh, got to control that racket. Okay, so you can see I can still create it. Now, here's the thing. Since I'm not clutching the racket with all three of my, all five of my fingers, my arm is now looser. Okay, so this is a great drill to just come out and even if you shadow it and feel how the racket can move through your hands when you're not holding the whole thing. Now, once you go through here, either using two th fingers or three fingers, put your whole hand on the racket, but keep that same sense of looseness. So here, keeping that same sense of looseness, okay? Okay, and so this is a great drill to do this. Now, also notice where I am, I'm halfway uh, up or pretty much a, a foot behind the surface line. I've done this on purpose. What this does is help me generate more spin and acceleration and still get the ball in. Most people want to do this from the baseline. I recommend doing it right here because what I can do is if I can swing really hard here and still get the ball in, well, just imagine if I scoot back, well, I have more court to work with. So I've already developed the skill. The next drill is what I call the catching drill. So I'm going to swing and let go of the racket at the end. So I have to be loose at the end. I can't be tight and catch the racket here. I have to be loose. Okay. So how this will work is Daniel's going to feed me a ball. And you can see how I let go. Don't let go too early because then you won't have your racket to catch. Okay. So you can see how I'm letting go. And this is the important part because I have to relax my hand at the end. All these drills equate to helping you use your body. And then when you get to contact, relaxing your hand so you can steer. A lot of times we miss balls because we're so tight, it gets hard to steer and control the racket because our arm is trying to do both and we don't want that. Now, there's one more quick thing. Even though I talked about the fingers, there's a special way of grabbing the racket that'll help you control the racket more. And you'll learn about that in this video where I show you the secret move that so many pros use that you can start using that'll help you control your racket face even better.